All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about something that might pose a pretty legitimate threat to Joe Biden's presidency. This is something that's being reported by the New York Times. That's who we're gonna be taking a look at this article from. And essentially they're talking about how Republicans have been gaining a lot of momentum heading into the 2022 midterm elections here in the United States. It's a pretty important election cycle coming up because this election is going to help determine the rest of the outcome for the Biden in administration. So as it stands right now, the Democrats have a lot of power in government. Not only do they have the sitting president and vice president and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they hold a lot of control in both the House and Senate, including a majority, which has helped them pass some legislation and do some things that probably would not have been possible if the Republicans had more of a chance to fight it. And as it stands right now, it's looking like because of things like this, the Republicans are actually gaining a lot of momentum going into these upcoming elections because, well, essentially, people between the two different political parties are worrying about what seems to be two completely different things. So today we're going to talk about what's going on with this upcoming election, you know, how it's going to impact the country, why Republicans are gaining momentum, probably what Democrats can do in order to reverse the tide of this, if they can really do anything at all, and we'll talk about what could be the potential outcome. Now, keep in mind, I am a voter in this upcoming election, but I'm not going to be sharing my personal preferences. If you're looking for this video to be like election advice or something, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. I'm not here to tell you, you know, what policies you should support that I feel like isn't really my role. I think my audience is more than capable of coming up with their own ideas and you guys are more than capable of, you know, reading through what every candidate has to say and coming to your own conclusion. I don't feel comfortable telling you guys really who I'm going to vote for because I don't want people to be like, oh, well, that's who Optimus is voting for. Therefore, you know what I mean? I don't really feel like that that's cool, but this is a pretty important election cycle coming up. I do want to encourage, if you are a voting age in the United States, please make sure to vote. Not to be cringe or anything, but people say your vote doesn't matter. That's not true. Who you select in these types of midterm elections, both locally and in your state and whatnot, has a lot of impact on the world. So I just wanted to make sure to say that. Ultimately, we are in control of the government and you got to do something about it, man. Like we, we got some pretty critical issues on the board right now as a country and I don't care who you vote for. I would rather you vote than not vote. I mean, you can vote for whoever you choose to vote for on the ballot as long as you vote, man. I mean, that's just part of what we do here in this country and it is very important. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about, about why this news is so important. So Republicans enter the final weeks of the contest for control of Congress with a narrow but distinctive advantage as the economy and inflation have surged as the dominant concerns, giving the party momentum to take back power from Democrats in next month's midterm elections, a New York Times slash Siena College poll has found. The poll has shown that 49% of likely voters said they planned to vote for a Republican to represent them in Congress on November 8th, compared with 45% who planned to vote for a Democrat. The result represents an improvement for Republicans since September, when Democrats held a one-point edge among likely voters in the last time Siena poll. Quote, the October poll's unrounded margin is closer to three points, not the four points the rounded figures imply. With inflation unrelenting and the stock market steadily on the decline, the share of likely voters who said economic concerns were the most important issues facing America has leaped since July to 44% from 36% far higher than any other issue. And voters most concerned with the economy favored Republicans overwhelmingly by more than a two to one margin. So I kind of just want to talk about this because, well, yeah, the economy not doing too hot right now. You know what I mean? Inflation has been skyrocketing. We're essentially heading into a recession. I mean, there's no way to avoid it. I read a report the other day that said there was like a 98% chance we ended up in a global recession in the next few years. And it was likely the Federal Reserve's fault that that's happening because of the way that they been hiking up interest rates and after the COVID-19 pandemic, essentially just printing money for no reason. I shouldn't say for no reason, but they were printing money without any logical output. You know, they were just printing money to address issues without, you know, like thinking, I guess, about how that would affect the economy. But yeah, to me personally, as a voter, yeah, the economy is probably one of my number one concerns right now. Uh, there are other issues that I am particularly worried about and I think are important, but the economy to me is 
definitely one of them. I mean, going into a recession the way that we are, I feel like that should be a bucket thing for everybody. You know what I mean? Like everyone should have like the economy in their concerns because that's something that affects literally everybody. You know what I mean? Like just to really kind of show how it's gotten here. Like I looked at a grocery receipt from December, 2020 for 18 items. I spent like 168 bucks for groceries. I had a pretty similar receipt like two weeks ago for like 19 items and it was almost $200. And it was pretty much all the same things. I got like some probiotic like drinks or something. I know that wasn't no $30. So that just kind of shows how even like the bare necessities of like groceries have gotten more expensive in this country. And I know that it's affecting a lot of families directly. You know what I mean? There's people out there who probably can't even afford to feed their families right now because inflation has just put them over the edge. But that's not the only reason that people are displeased with the current outlook for the country and why a lot more people are starting to shift towards Republican voting in the upcoming midterm elections. The added challenge for Democrats is the intensity of the electorate's displeasure with the president. The poll showed that 45% of likely voters strongly disapproved of the job that Mr. Biden was doing, and 90% of those voters planned to back a Republican for Congress this fall. Democrats were actually pulling in the support of 50% of voters who said they, quote, somewhat disapprove of Mr. Biden. That is good news for Democrats for now. It's also a perilous position to be in because those voters are ripe to be won over by Republicans who are unleashing millions of dollars in ads to link Democratic candidates to an unpopular president. Democrats have essentially maxed out support among voters who support Mr. Biden, winning 88% of them, according to the poll, but Republicans have room to grow among voters who don't like Mr. Biden. So this is also a huge factor going into the upcoming election, right? You know, Democrats, they're wanting to win their seats, they're wanting to win these votes so they maintain control. The only problem is, they keep picking candidates that people don't fucking like, you know? I've been very vocal about my displeasure with the Biden presidency as I was at times with the Trump presidency and other presidencies even before that when I was making content way back in the day. Most people simply don't like Biden. And that's a problem for the Democrats. Like, he, when you look at Biden, he's not really a great candidate in really any way. I mean, this isn't even a political bias because I'm not voting for a specific party in the election. I'm going to vote for both Republicans and Democrats. I mean, I'm not going to tell you specifically who I'm voting for, but this issue isn't one that affects me personally. But a lot of people just don't like Biden. And of course, Biden is a Democrat. So a lot of people are now lumping that in with like, hey, if I don't like this Democrat, why would I want to vote for the other Democrats? Democrats. And a lot of that's because Biden is, let's be honest, an unlikable president candidate, you know? And a lot of people are, are attributing the economic woes that we're kind of going through and are going to be going through for a while to the Biden administration. So that's not a good sign. You know, if people are basically adjusting their viewpoint to you're basically responsible for the economic problems going on in the country, that doesn't mean good things for you come election time. And as it stands right now, a good portion of American voters just don't like Biden. Which makes sense, you know, it makes sense why people don't like him. They, once again, kind of just equate, oh, economic problems to Biden, on top of the fact that there's like a lot of political divide already in the country between Republicans and Democrats, so that doesn't help the problem really at all either. But at the end of the day, uh, this could legitimately put Biden's whole presidency and legacy up in jeopardy. I mean, if he loses that Democratic majority that backs him and backs a lot of the Democratic policies, not only have Republicans expressed support in investigating President Biden and his family if they do regain some sort of majority, but they're also going to be able to block essentially any legislation that the Biden administration wants to pass. And long term, that's not good. People already view him unfavorably and view him as somebody who's not really getting the job done. If there's a way to block his legislation and block a lot of the Democratic moves in Congress, that only poses worse for the Biden presidency. I really feel like the outcome of the 2022 midterm elections is going to help determine who wins the presidency in 2024 between the Republicans and Democrats. If Republicans successfully get back some sort of majority here and they're able to block Democratic legislation for the next two years, I think you see a lot more people flip Republican when it comes to the presidential election too. If the Democrats hang on and they're able to pass more of their legislation, especially with the young voters mostly supporting Democrats, that might be huge for them. 
but I don't know if they want to reelect Biden or if they want to go with a different candidate. Honestly, you know, that dislike for Biden is a real concern for their party. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shoptimus down below. We just dropped new merchandise down there as well. And until my next video, guys, oh wait, actually, thank you to my Watch Optimus subscribers. Your support helps the channel tremendously. Now, until my next video, guys, this is Optimus talking about the midterm elections and signing out.